attention, John Hart. Way to go, man. You got, it, you got it again. Gosh, I was so Every nervous. I, I didn't want to have to read it. No, it's Tell, like con, cat, e, nation, concatenation. Yeah. What in the world is it? Uh, well, it's a science fiction and fact event that we've been holding since 2015. It's uh, in conjunction with Jackson College and a couple of the endowed chairs professors and then the library and then Nostalgia Inc., which is the local comic shop. And uh, yeah, uh, the goal is to get people interested in math and science through popular culture. And our first guest was Walter Mosley, the author Walter Mosley. And now this year we've got a really uh, up and coming guy named John Jennings who is big in Afrofuturism. Ooh. So Wait, in what? Afrofuturism. So it's a, basically an idea that how will people of color be represented in the future, like in speculative fiction, science fiction? Oh, wow. And so he's one of the up and comers. He just is uh, featured right now at the Smithsonian, African American History of the Smithsonian. Wow. Uh, just three weeks ago. He had to cancel an event because they, he and another presenter got invited. So he's kind of, we are getting um, one of the premier people in yeah. the field, like as it's really happening for him. So, nice. and it's by luck and. He's also writing a comic book for uh, Marvel right now, Silver Surfer, oh, wow. and it's on the shelves right now. Yeah. He's going to be coming uh, to Nostalgia Inc. in a couple of weeks. He's going to be signing those for free. Nice. He's also doing a, a free comic book day for Marvel. Riri, who is uh, Ironheart from the new Black Panther movie. Okay. She's basically the female Iron Man, Iron Woman, but yeah. she's called Ironheart. And so he's got a story in there that he wrote. He'll be signing those for wow. free. So. That's yeah. amazing. Very timely topic, too, as, we're, as a nation, we're just looking at how we are representing black people in history and in, in the media, present. Yeah, yeah. And this is kind of, a, I, I don't know, it's always been going on. And it, people were talk. we talked in one of our features about how it was a fringe thing, but it's not true. It's always been represented in a black culture. It's more maybe a fringe in totally mainstream culture, but if you think about somebody like Sun Ra in the Space Orchestra, he was a guy representing Afrofuturism. It's like basically, how can black people see themselves in the future? And if you think about it on television, the first figure to really continuously represent black um, people on television was you, Lieutenant Uhura in Star Trek. And so she was actually one of the first people that wasn't given some kind of stereotypical role was on the bridge, was featured constantly, yeah. um, you know, had the first interracial kiss on Star Trek. So, I mean, science fiction has been a way for people to imagine difference in the future and more yeah. inclusion for people. So, um, and, and that's kind of the message of this one. It's what we started with, with Walter Mosley. Um, and actually, uh, African American people have been represented in science fiction literature since the 1850s, but it's just not widely taught or known. And actually, W.D. Du Bois, who founded the NAACP, was one of the first mainstream publishers of a story called Megascope. Mm. And that's in 1919. So wow. it's just that we haven't historically caught up until now, yeah. like you're saying, Bart. It just is a matter of catch up and being familiar with stuff. So it, became, it, it, it actually um, originated in kind of white academia studying and talking about race as a form of technology mm -hmm. and how we define things by race and that's a technology to control control situations and so people were basically like how will you be able to control your own body in the future what will happen so john is at the height of that right now um, one of the things that he is really famous for he won a hugo award which is a high-ranking science fiction award for his take of octavia butler's parable of the sower and it is very immediate. If you haven't read that book or the graphic novel, super immediate about climate issues and how that's gonna affect um, next generation people. And then like, what will future living look like? And how will we bridge this time to that future time? Yeah. And when is the convention? It, it's been going. Uh, we've been going, there's lots of content on our website, but um, this is what we call a slow con. <laughs> <laughs> It just keeps going because of COVID. So like got we it. started in COVID, we started with Black Panther, but the next two events, we've got a big event coming up this weekend on the 29th at the Michigan Theater. Um, we've got three different shorts that we've produced and the third one is coming out this year. It's a um, Afrofuturism by a local director named Justin Henry. Oh. And then we just want, asked the director if we could show his other film, it's called Underneath. 
and it's basically about technology going back and forth through time through a different kind of planet and to, into slavery and how that all mixes up. And uh, we asked uh, David Kirkman, hey, would, can we just show your film? He's like, how about I come oh, wow. and I talk about it? And he's been showing it at small film festivals. And then just yesterday he goes, hey, can you just tell me the hotel? Because we're going to have a bunch of cast come up and they're going to come too. And I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, production crews kind of come up and they'll show up too. Nice. And so we're going to have like a talk between these two directors the the first time we're actually having a premiere of the third short it hasn't been shown anywhere it's being completed just in time um and it's uh i haven't even seen a run of it yet but i'm told it's phenomenal when uh, justin pitched the idea we were like wow you really get it <laughs> you're like you're really getting the idea so we're super excited first time they'll be shown these are all free uh we just want people to come and enjoy from every walk of life. Even though the features, uh, you know, Afrofuturism, this is for everybody and everybody will be able to appreciate the fine films that'll be there. Very cool. And then we've got our tie-up events are for the fifth and sixth, and that's when John comes to town. Um, John's been on two or three things, but he'll be coming on the fifth to the Martin Luther King Center. But before that, we've got a private event with him at Jackson High School, oh, nice. and he's going to be talking to the junior and senior classes. Um, John's running. He's it's kind of to talk about how do you break into stuff, mm -hmm. how do you do writing, and then he's got his own imprint from Abrams Books, which it's all uh, graphic novelists of color doing their own books. So he's a busy dude, mm -hmm. and then he's currently writing. Um, the Silver Surfer uh, with a resurrected character from the 60s um, that uses technology to be revived. Like he's a, I don't know if he's a zombie. I guess <laughs> technically he's a zombie. He has nanobites and nanobots that get him going. So we got that. And then on Saturday, it's a big day for him. 11 to 1 at the uh, comic shop. He'll be signing Silver Surfer, Riri stuff. And then 2 to 4 at the Michigan Theater. Um, our partner in that, those appearances are, is the library, and we want to do it at the library, but we're hoping it will be so big that it will outsize the library, which is why we moved it to the Michigan Theater. Nice. Wow. It's a huge weekend, and there's so much going on. We're recommending people check the website. Yeah, uh, for exactly. For Jackson College as well, yep. because you partner with JC. Right. Well, we got it here. I was just going to point out, we have it in the blazer here. Oh, nice. and we have, And it's really easy to remember. It's jacksonconcon.org. You just put jxncon.org. We have an events page. You just hit the events page, and it's all there. It's on our. If you if you would prefer Facebook, we have it also on Facebook, and uh, you can download those and do whatever you want. Well, and Facebook's uh, still a thing. It is yeah. still. <laughs> yeah, I know it isn't. It's for the old people. Oh no no no. No, that's it's what they say. It's they say coming back. They said Instagram. Twitter's gonna go away, and then Facebook will be back. Well, then what yeah. about my? Let's just get MySpace <laughs> back, and everything yeah. is. I'm now not Andy's not here, so I, I don't know. It'd be okay if we do the shoe cam when Andy's not here. He's gonna be really jealous, but we yeah. we need oh, to see what you're sporting down there. Well, I don't know where's it at. Where's the shoe cam? It's over right there. Over here. Yeah. Oh. It's all decked out. Uh, he's good. Yeah. Check out those Doc Martens. Those are the, these are the premiere of the Doc Martens. Are those they're suede? The, they're corduroy suede <gasps> Doc Martens. Wow. By the, they, this is the only thing they go with. So. Wow, well, I love it. And this is your this is their debut. This is the premiere. Yeah. Right here. They've been out of the house. Nice. Yeah, so. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah. yeah thanks. thanks for having me. Yeah, John's uh, been doing this uh, for many years. John's also the executive director of Disability Connections. So thanks for your. I'm uh, volunteering for this. Yeah, and it was so great. The first, the first two people before me, like the last time, are partners of ours. So oh, that's like, great. So I was like, oh, AARP, and then, and then they've been sending me mail because I turned fifty. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Browns, we we do some uh, vaccinations for people that are homebound, basically, yeah. or great. don't want to, aren't able to go out. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, our production department works hard on making the show. Uh, it, was, a theme. it just fit. <laughs> it all fit together. Good job, everybody. John Hart with Con Con. Uh, the morning show wraps up after this.